Today I will talk about uh, uh, two joint works with uh, Tej Din Ghul and uh, uh, Chu Wan Lin and Idris Titi. Um, uh, it's about uh, the effect of the Coriolis force on the 3D uh, primitive equation. So let me get started. I don't know why it's like this. Um, so the two collaborators uh, have photos here. So this is Tej from uh, New York University in Abu Dhabi and uh, Chu Wan Lin. And um, I decided not to put uh, Idris's photo because when I look into the web, all the photos that I found, uh, Idris was smiling. So, um, okay. Um, so this is my plan for today. So I will uh, 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 do a brief introduction uh, about the derivation of the primitive equations from the Businesque equations. And, um, and then I will mainly focus on the viscous case. Then I will uh, state the known results about the 3D implicit primitive equation. I will talk about uh, uh, imposedness and well posedness and uh, finite time blow up. And the purpose here is to, uh, to, uh, to argue what would be the best uh, functional space where to solve the primitive equations. Um, then I will look to the effect of the rotation. Um, and then again, I, I will redo the same plan, uh, starting with the impositeness, local positiveness, and blow up. And then uh, at the end of, uh, of uh, this lecture, so we will talk about long time existence uh, first without the effect of the rotation and then see how the rotation uh, uh, would act. Okay. Um, so we have seen uh, um, uh, last Monday uh, when Idris talked about the uh, uh, Businesque equation. Um, so the Businesque equation uh, are given by uh, equation number one and this is a good model in uh, um, geophysical flows. And uh, in geophysical flows, so we, we have a difference between the horizontal scales and the uh, vertical scales. So uh, the horizontal scales are much larger than the, um, than the vertical scales. And um, for that, so we can think of these Poussinus equations as set as um, in, in a thin domain. So uh, a domain of uh, height or depth uh, epsilon and epsilon is uh, is uh, uh, intended to be a small uh, parameter here. So, and if you rescale the viscosity and if you, if you see it, the horizontal one to one, and you set the vertical uh, diffusivity and um, viscosity to epsilon square, then um, you can show that solutions to uh, the Businesque equation converge to solution to the primitive equation, which is in red. So this is the main, target for uh, today's talk. And uh, this has been done by Azirar Guillen in one and rigorously proved by Idris uh, and uh, uh, Lee um, very recently. Okay, so this is the main focus. And uh, more specifically, I will, I will try to go to, uh, uh, to uh, the viscous case. So I will forget about the viscosity here, right? and the diffusivity, uh, and I will uh, mainly focus on uh, the viscous case. So this is uh, an extended uh, uh, reference uh, page for uh, all the work done um, for the viscous primitive equation uh, and partial viscosity, partial diffusivity. I think Idris has uh, talked um, um, about this uh, on Monday. So let me skip that. So, um, so today I will focus on, on system three, the primitive, 3D primitive equation. And here you see uh, this parameter omega, which is uh, the, the speed of the uh, uh, Coriolis force. So my, do my domain here is uh, um, the whole space and the Z is confined between zero and one. And the boundary condition um, is um, uh, W equal to zero. So the vertical uh, velocity at uh, the bottom and at the top of the domain is, is zero. Um, so in some references, this equation is referred to, uh, to be a hydrostatic polar equation. Good. Um, so without, I uh, focus first on uh, the results that uh, uh, I know about uh, the 3D primitive equation. And uh, mainly uh, in the first part, I will uh, 
focus on the case when the rotation is not there. So I'll start with the, um, with the yield positiveness results to argue what would be the, the, the best space to solve these, uh, these equations. So uh, there is a result that goes back to uh, Rinaldi, um, who constructed uh, uh, a shear flow. So he considered shear flow. So if you take a shear flow uh, given by this hyperbolic tangent, um, so it's an odd uh, uh, function. And um, so you take the shear flow and you try to linearize the primitive equation around this flow. So u is given by the shear flow and wp are both zero. And uh, d here is a small parameter. Then he constructed a, a, a wave um, that grows uh, exponentially in time. And uh, the, the, the real part of the sigma here, the frequency, uh, is uh, given by lambda k for lambda non-zero, okay? And um, as you can see, this is an ex exponentially growing uh, solution to the linear problem. And this solution, as we have seen last week in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the courses, uh, um, so we have seen that this, is, this instability uh, is of uh, kelvin Helmholtz type. And this type of instability, uh, it, all, uh, it uh, already tells us that um, the primitive equation is ill posed at least it's linearly ill posed in uh, any Sobolev space and in any Jevry class of order S with S bigger than one, right? So it already gives us an indication about uh, suitable space to solve this, this equation. And now uh, to counterbalance this uh, exponential growth, so one uh, has to take uh, uh, um, strong decay. So we have to take initial data that decay uh, exponentially fast. And um, uh, for S equals to one, right? So this uh, Jivere class corresponds exactly to uh, space of analytic functions. Um, so there are uh, other instabilities for other models. And for instance, for Prandtl equation, um, this uh, uh, kelvin helmholtz instability is somehow weaker because the exponential growth is like square root of k. And uh, um, uh, so uh, in some sense, the, the instability in the primitive equation, implicit primitive equation, is somehow worse than, uh, than, um, than that uh, for Prandtl equation. And for Prandtl equation, um, so this type in, of instability suggests that the right functional space to solve Prandtl equation without any assumption or, uh, uh, on the initial data, uh, monoelectricity or, or something like that, uh, it would be the uh, Jevre uh, space with the order S equals to two. And indeed, this is what uh, uh, has uh, recently been proved by Dieter and uh, Gerard Barret uh, for, for the case of Prandtl and Lee Masmoudi Young uh, as well. Okay. Now, um, using this linear instability or the linear instable solutions, so uh, Han Kwan and Guyen, they proved uh, that uh, the primitive equation or the hydrostatic error equations are indeed uh, linearly and non linearly ill posed in any Sobolev space. Okay. Good. Now, if you go to, uh, to the local word positiveness, so we can uh, basically classify um, uh, the results in two categories. So the first one is um, um, if we assume more assumptions or more conditions on the initial condition like monotonicity, um, then uh, one can solve um, the primitive, implicit primitive equation in a class of Sobolev spaces. And this is in the spirit of the works by Brunier and Grenier, uh, also by uh, Masmoud, Kukavika, Masmoudi, uh, Vikal, and Wong. And the other class, uh, interesting class, is uh, the, the work by uh, Vlad, uh, Kukavika, Tima, and Zian, where um, they proved uh, the well posedness uh, when the initial data is uh, um, analytic, uh, are analytic functions. So there is no monotonicity assumption here. Okay, and their result uh, indeed uh, includes the, the, the case of rotation. Okay, however, the other results 
uh, they don't include the case of the uh, rotation because this monotonicity is uh, seemingly broken when, when you add the rotation to it. Um, so I'll come back to, uh, to uh, Vlad and the uh, Kukavikatinam CN work later when, when I study the effect of the rotation. Okay. Um, now, the other type of results that I know about uh, uh, the implicit primitive equation is the uh, existence of uh, singularities in finite time. And this has been proved by myself and uh, Ch Cao, uh, together with Nakanishi and Pedris. Uh, and shortly after that, uh, Wong uh, have given an another uh, proof. So the proof here of the uh, 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 finite time uh, blow up or singularity, um, it's uh, through a reduced model. I, I will talk about this uh, later on. Um, okay. Now, the main question in, in, in this project is um, uh, to see what are uh, the effects of the Coriolis force on all these types of results, the uh, ill positiveness, the well positiveness, and the blow. Okay, so now let's take uh, uh, omega non-zero, so uh, non-zero Coriolis force, and uh, let's take an initial condition that is 2D, and so it's uh, Y independent. Um, so if we, sorry, if we rewrite the primitive equation for this type of solution, so we get equation number seven, subject to this uh, boundary condition uh, that W is zero at the, the top and the bottom of, of uh, the domain. Now, um, you can see that uh, uh, one of the main things in proving ill positiveness was to, to uh, get rid of uh, uh, the second uh, component of the velocity V. Okay, I uh, take it zero. But you see here, if we take V equals to zero at, uh, initially, then this is, not, uh, uh, this is no longer propagated in the presence of the rotation, okay? Uh, because of the rotation, it's not, uh, no longer propagated, unless uh, obviously uh, U is zero and this is trivial, not interesting. Okay, um, then we would like to perturb this uh, um, primitive equation uh, or reduce it uh, uh, primitive equation around this specific uh, sh uh, shear flow in, in um, uh, U component. And V is explicitly given by minus omega X and the pressure is given by that. So let's perturb this around this uh, uh, static solution. Then, uh, and U here, uh, again, is given by R Renati's uh, example. So this, the same one as uh, without rotation. So if we write down the perturbed equation for U tilde, then we get uh, equation number nine. And uh, with, now we take a periodic uh, perturbation, okay? The same way as uh, Renati uh, and Juan uh, have, have taken. So now let's assume that uh, our, uh, system has a uh, well positiveness, then uh, for instance, it has a unique solution. And we see here now for this perturbed equation, the V tilde equal to zero is, is uh, propagated. If it is initially zero, then this is nothing but a transport equation on V tilde. And therefore uh, we can reduce equation number nine to, uh, to this system 11. But we know that this system 11 is, uh, th thanks to, uh, to the result by uh, Nguyen and, uh, and the collaborator, we know that this, this one is linearly, both linearly and non-linearly imposed in uh, any sub uh, class. And also in uh, linearly, um, linearly imposed in geometric class for uh, S bigger than one. Okay, and this was, part of uh, my, uh, my work with uh, Chu Wan Lin and uh, at least uh, 2020. So, so the imposedness result, it extends to the case uh, uh, of Coriolis force without uh, a lot of pain. Good, so this is the first thing. So, so this uh, suggests that if we want to study uh, the well positiveness for the primitive implicit primitive equation, then um, the right functional space would be an uh, analytic function as we have seen this in Kukavika and uh, Vlad, Timam, Zian uh, work. Good. So now uh, let me talk about uh, the local well uh, in, in, in the uh, 3D implicit primitive equation with, uh, with the rotation. Okay. 
So um, this is equation, uh, uh, so system 12 is uh, the 3D primitive equation um, in our uh, domain here. The same boundary condition, so I just uh, rewrote this and let's, let's focus on this now. Now, uh, so we can periodize, we can periodize the uh, uh, R2, right? And, um, uh, and we can uh, uh, restrict solution, uh, we can study the solution on uh, T3 um, using this uh, uh, odd symmetry for V and uh, even uh, the symmetry for V and um, uh, the odd symmetry for W. Good. Now, in the presence of rotation, uh, so as I mentioned earlier, so the only result that I know uh, uh, about well posedness is that of uh, Kukavi, Katim, and Vikal, and Zian. But uh, the thing here is uh, when we look to the time of existence, uh, it shrinks as the rotation gets faster and faster. And this seems to be counterintuitive uh, if we know what happens to 3D Euler equation or 3D Navier-Stokes equations uh, or uh, more um, or, um, Business equation with rotation or um, um, stratification. Um, for instance, uh, we know that uh, um, rotation or fast rotation, at least, it uh, washes away singularities, uh, possible singularities for Navier-Stokes. This has been proved by uh, Babin Mahalovnikolenko. Uh, or um, it can delay or uh, extend the, uh, the the lifespan of uh, 3D other solutions. Um, so, um, so this is what we wanted to improve, okay? And in the case of the whole space, of course, so there is the nice uh, work by uh, Sherman de Jardin Gallagher Grenier, uh, who studied the, the, the case space of uh, Navier-Stokes uh, equation and uh, it's globally well posed for fast rotation. Good. Um, so as I, as, as I said, so the main driving uh, goal is to improve uh, the local well posedness result and uh, then um, see what is the effect of fast rotation on, on, uh, on the dynamic or the lifespan, uh, more precisely. Good. Okay, so let me, let me specify the functional spaces and the uh, um, precise denotation that we use. So, uh, the Sobolev norm is uh, standard here. So we, we, since we work in the 3D torus, then uh, uh, we can use uh, Fourier uh, series. Uh, so let me denote by A the square root of minus Laplace. And the Gevre class is given by um, this exponential weight in the Fourier uh, side, okay? And um, so here we mix the Gevre norm with the Sobolev norm. Right. So the, the exponential is for the Gevre and, um, and the K, the polynomial uh, growth here is for, for, uh, for Sobolev. Uh, um, so there is this index uh, S here that represents the order of this Gevre class. And when S is equal to one, this is exactly the space of analytic functions and uh, tau turns out to be the radius of analyticity of uh, your function. Okay, um, so after that, let me introduce a series of um, a series of uh, projections. So we are going to need uh, the projection, uh, the Lure projection, but uh, here in the 2D one. Okay, so the 2D, uh, more specifically the, in the horizontal direction. So let me denote it by pH. And uh, for um, mean value uh, zero psi. So let me de define Laplace inverse uh, if, phi, uh, if uh, psi, if phi solves this equation. Okay. And uh, let me define a second projection, which is uh, the averaging in the z direction. So that's P0. So the P0 uh, f is the uh, commonly uh, called the parotropic mode. And uh, F tilde is the baroclinic uh, uh, mode, okay? And this turns out to be a nice projection, this P0, P0 it's orthogonal in L2. As you say, you can see the, any L, the L2 norm of any function is given by, uh, the square of the L2 norm of the, any function is given by the square 
the sum of the square of the uh, L2 norms of the projections. Uh, similarly, uh, we have this nice property in this uh, geographic class. Okay, so this is the uh, um, uh, set of, uh, th this is the functional space that we are going to study our uh, problem. Okay, now a um, few observations be before we state the first uh, result. So if we take the 3D uh, primitive equation and if we integrate with respect to X, then we immediately see that, uh, and do integration by parts, and we immediately see that the average of V is, uh, does nothing but rotate, rotating, okay? So you can, um, uh, so this means this equation 21 tells us that uh, the, the, the average of V is a constant uh, of time. So if you take it, if you take it initially zero, then it, it will stay, uh, stay zero. And just for the sake of simplicity, we will, uh, from now on, we will assume it that this uh, average is zero, okay? So we are taking uh, zero uh, mean um, solutions to this primitive, 3D primitive equation with rotation. Okay, uh, one of the biggest challenges or, uh, or things that uh, we have seen in, in uh, Kukavika, um, Timam, and Vlad, and Sian's work is, the pressure, okay? So the pressure was uh, the biggest enemy and it grows in, in omega with, with, the, with the fast rotation. And we wanted to uh, somehow get rid of the pressure, okay? And um, to get rid of the pressure, we need the, to project, uh, uh, we need to use the delay projection. But uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the, divergence, the horizontal divergence of V is not zero. However, the, the, the horizontal divergence of V bar is zero, of the average of V is zero, okay? Because of the boundary conditions. So that's why uh, we will take our equation 20, uh, so the primitive equation, and we will first apply uh, uh, the, two, uh, the two projections. So the first projection is we average in, in Z, okay? And then we apply uh, the Lure projection to get rid of the pressure. So this is the first idea, and when we do so, um, so instead of working the, uh, with the V solution to the primitive equation, we will work with the V bar and V tilde bar, barotropic bar, okay? okay? And this is, uh, uh, 20, system 22 is just translation of that using these two projections. So there is equivalence between the two systems. And of course, we can also translate the boundary conditions here, okay? So the first result, uh, with uh, Tej, uh, Chu Wan, and uh, Idris. So when we take initial data, V0 bar, V0 tilde, the barotropic baroclinic, in the analytic space, so we fix tau zero here, it's positive number, and R, so of regularity is uh, high enough, so bigger than five half. Uh, so when we fix this initial condition, so we can explicitly uh, uh, construct a solution. So we can construct a solution um, with the radius of an, in the analytic space with the radius of an analyticity explicitly given by uh, 24. So the radius of analyticity does not depend on omega, that does not shrink when omega gets passed. So this is a uniform uh, uh, time, uniform radius of analyticity. And uh, our solution is continuous uh, in, in time with uh, um, analytic uh, uh, regularity in, in X, okay? Um, and also we have, uh, so this solution depends uniquely and conti continuously on the initial data. Good. Now, uh, once we have well posedness on a uniform time of existence, we wonder if solutions can exist for a long time in the, in the, uh, for, for, for all time. Uh, when when uh, we have rotation, okay, but um, but it turns out that this is not possible because we do have blow up, even if we have um, uh, rotation, okay. So let let let's see that. So if we have rotation, so let's look for y independent solutions to primitive equation. Then we can reduce uh, the primitive equation to equation number twenty six. Now if we take periodic boundary conditions, 
and uh, uh, the, the, this odd symmetry in X, which, which is invariant under the, 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 this flow here. And we can see that uh, if we denote by V, uh, the restriction of uh, Vx, the X derivative of, of V, and W to be the restriction of W at, at uh, X axis, then this, uh, this reduction leads us to uh, equation or system 27, okay? Now, for 27, we have, we know the explicit solution, uh, the, the V solution. Indeed, V equals to omega is uh, by uniqueness. This is um, 27, okay? So if you plug here omega, this term goes away and the first equation vanishes and we are left with um, this equation. Oops, sorry. So, so the system reduces to this one dimensional partial differential equation. And um, we could immediately recognize that this is exactly the same uh, PDE that appears in, in my work with, uh, with the Chow, uh, Chow and uh, Idris and Nakanishi or in the, uh, in the uh, paper or the result by Quant. This is exactly the same. PDE, and it turns out that this PDE develop, develops uh, uh, singularity in finite time. So that means that uh, uh, the, even with the uh, in the presence of rotation, the primitive equations still have um, uh, solutions, uh, solu smooth solutions that uh, blow up in uh, flat, finite time. Good. Um, so this this. PDE, this equation 28 was um, derived um, for two types of the boundary conditions uh, in, in these two parts. So, okay, so, so we cannot hope that local solution exists for uh, all time uh, for the primitive equation in the presence of rotation. Okay, uh, now let me give you a few uh, key observations in, in, in my opinion. So if we look to the blow up time of this equation 28, so the blow up time is explicitly given uh, with the initial conditions and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, the first observation is that um, the results uh, by the result by Wong, it allows uh, analytic uh, initial data. This is extremely important because um, our local well positiveness applies in this, in this setting. This is very good. So the second thing, if we take this ex explicit example of initial data, so if we take uh, u0 given by sine times this function, and we rescale it, we, we, we rescale it by this factor lambda, okay? And then we take uh, v0 to be minus omega sine x. So if we take this, then the blow up time for this partial differential equation, which gives us an upper bound of the blow up time of the original primitive equation, so it's explicitly given by this uh, nine over two lambda, this constant here. Now, since this, our choice here of this specific initial data has uh, um, u zero uh, average in Z is zero, and V zero is independent of, uh, on, on Z, then the, we know explicitly the barotropic and baroclinic modes. Okay, so let me, let me do this uh, these observations now. Now, if I choose my lambda here, my uh, prefactor lambda, to be one over omega, and if I choose omega very large, then this this uh, information about the time of blow up, it tells me that if we take the baroclinic component to be of size one over omega, um, then, uh, however. Uh, the bar baroclinic mode is of size one over omega. However, the size of the initial data, the whole initial data is uh, of size omega because of minus omega sine, right? So that, that, blows up, that blow up result, it tells us that the solution uh, exists up to um, time omega. Now, it remains interesting to, to know if the size um, of both components of order one, that the time of existence uh, grows with omega. This we don't know uh, how to do yet. Um, uh, however, we will prove that 
if uh, um, if the time if the baroc uh, baroclinic mode is is small, then we can extend that. Good. So this is the first observation. The second observation is if we take the uh, baroclinic component initially to be zero, then it stays zero. And the solution to the 3D primitive equation coincides using our local well positionless result, coincides with the 2D solution, uh, uh, solution to the, uh, of the 2D uh, Euler equation. And we know that the 2D Euler equation is globally well posed in the space of analytic functions. And this is the result by Livermore Oliver. Good. Um, so now the goal is to, uh, when the uh, analytic norm of V0 tilde is small, uh, we want to show that the 3D implicit primitive equation should be, uh, uh, the time of existence should be prolonged, okay? So the key observation from the blow up result and from this simple observation that V tilde to be zero, it propagates is that any smallness on the baroclinic mode probably will uh, extend the length, the length span, uh, the, the lifespan of uh, the solution. And this is indeed uh, our second result. It's about long time existence. So if you assume that V0 bar is analytic with the, a little bit extra regularity than the baroclinic mode with R big, uh, large enough. So if I fix the size of the initial data, Okay, so this is the, the size of the analytic norm of the V bar, it's M. But I do assume here that the baroclinic, uh, baroclinic mode is small in the analytic norm. Then I can, and, and I fix a, a time of existence, then I can adjust the rate of rotation so that the, my solution exists up to that time. In other words, other, other way to say the theorem, so um, if we choose epsilon, uh, small enough here, this, uh, um, this norm of the baroclinic, uh, the Givre norm, the baroclinic mode to be sufficiently small, then I can extend the solution uh, by three logs, yeah. log, 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 one over epsilon. And you can see that um, when, if you take epsilon to be zero, then this uh, matches very well with the 2D uh, that equation that we, uh, we might have observed earlier. Okay, now, um, uh, on top of that, so we can, we can show that uh, the solution to the uh, 3D primitive equation converge to the 2D Euler equation, so we can make that rigorous in space of analytic functions. Good, so, so far we haven't seen the effect of the rotation yet. And this is our goal in, uh, in the third part. So we want to see what is the effect of fast rotation in uh, the 3D primitive equation. So, uh, to motivate, um, we start to motivate ourselves. So we started uh, what, what happens in the 3D Euler equation. If, and if the same uh, mechanism uh, can, be, uh, can be extended to 3D primitive equation. It seems not. Um, so let me take the uh, 3D uh, Euler equation with, with, with the rotation here. So uh, the rotation doesn't affect doesn't interfere in the energy uh, estimate because of the skew symmetry of this rotation. Uh, the other uh, key th observation is that if we take the Poincaré uh, waves, so this is the linearized part, just drop the nonlinear uh, term in 3D and we study the linearized part. These are called the Poincaré waves. Um, so the Poincaré waves that are given through this Fourier multiplier by uh, plus or minus x c three uh, by omega c, and these Poincaré waves uh, they uh, disperse actually if we are in the whole space. So, um, so we can we can show this uh, one over t d k. Uh, and a time average version of this dispersion is given uh, by this uh, identity here, which is which is due to Cochlé Takada in this explicit form, but. Uh, it actually goes to the work of Chemin, Desjardins, Gallagher, and Prenier. Uh, okay, so um, there is a dispersion, dispersion mechanism uh, if we work in the, in the whole space. Uh, so let's see 
what happens in the case of the primitive equation. So well, let's linearize it and we get equation number 32, okay? And it turns out that the uh, equation 32 has an explicit solution. So this explicit solution is given by 33. So V can be uh, written as the barot uh, barotropic V0 bar, which is independent of time. It does not decay at all. And the baroclinic, it, it doesn't do anything but rotating with the frequency omega, okay? So there is no decay here. And the pressure also, it, it's independent of time. It's given uh, explicitly by a plus inverse of omega-3. Omega-3 is the third component of the vorticity, initial vorticity. Good. So it seems that this not, it's not the same as asked for Euler's equation. Okay, so what do we do? So here, so we want uh, to control uh, the, the baroclinic, uh, barot baroclinic mode. Um, in order to prolong the lifespan. So the idea here is to use more structure of the equation as we did earlier by using the, the projections on uh, averaging in Z and um, the barot baroclinic barotropic. So we want to use more structure of the equation here and we want to further decompose the baroclinic mode into uh, eigenspaces of this rotation, okay? So these are the projection P plus and P minus. These are the projection onto the eigenspaces of uh, this uh, rotation here. Okay. So now my solution to the uh, 3D primitive equation can be decomposed into uh, average in Z and uh, the bar barotropic, uh, baroclinic, sorry, uh, component, which further decomposes into P plus, P, P minus. We have nice properties of these projections. They commute together and they commute with the derivative and with the exponential uh, TA, A is square root of minus plus. So it has the nicer properties. And now uh, we further decompose the baroclinic uh, mode into uh, plus or minus uh, components, which turned out to be conjugate, complex conjugate. And rewriting uh, the equation, so we get this uh, mess here, 38, uh, 39. And uh, for the uh, barotropic, uh, we get equation number 40. And you can see here, so, uh, so, so the, we, we get basically the 2D Euler, if we look to 40, so we get 2D Euler equation, and uh, we get, uh, we get uh, uh, highly oscillating charts here, okay? Um, however, if we take the barotropic, uh, Clinic, uh, baroclinic, yeah. I always confuse between them. Um, so if we take the baroclinic, then we get uh, exponential, uh, uh, highly oscillating terms and terms that they, not, they do not oscillate. Um, how much time do I have, uh, Isabel, please? Hello? Um, about two minutes. Uh, two, two minutes? Three minutes. Three? Okay, good. You can go all the way to five if you like. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So, um, so this is what we get. Now, if we, if we denote, uh, so the, the, the previous expression, it tells us what would be the limit system as omega goes to infinity, at least formally. Uh, um, so the formal limit when there is no oscillation, right? Um, and that's exactly uh, uh, system number 41 and 42, okay? So 41 is uh, the 2D Euler equation and 42 is, um, it's a transport equation uh, that is um, stretched by, uh, by, by uh, this term here, okay? And this is, uh, this is a fully linear equation, the second one, the second one. And with the first one, it's the 2D Euler, that's, that's a nice equation. And we know that uh, it's globally well posed in, any Sobolev or uh, analytic uh, space. Okay, so the idea is to take the difference between this limit system and um, and uh, the previous, uh, the primitive equation. Okay, and then uh, when we do energy estimate, so we we are left with terms that um, um, we 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 can't uh, we don't know how to control. And uh, for this term, so we, we impose uh, the smallness assumption that we have seen. 
Okay. Um, so this is the theorem. So if we fix initial condition here uh, in this uh, analytic class with the radius, uh, initial radius of analyticity tau zero, if R is big enough, and you, again, we fix a size of the initial data. So, so the analytic norm here, it's arbitrary, okay? However, we, we require a smallness only on the Sobolev norm, not the analytic norm, okay? So if the initial uh, baroque, baroque clinic, if the initial baroque clinic mode is small in Sobolev norm, then we can extend uh, we, we can extend the lifespan of the solution by four logs. This is very weak, but nevertheless it's it's growing uh, in, as omega goes to uh, infinity. Okay, and we we decided to call this this condition uh, the or these data to be well prepared data. Okay. Good. So now we see that. The fast rotation it indeed uh, uh, prolongs uh, the lifespan of uh, of the solutions. Okay, uh, so to to conclude, um, so we have uh, we can construct uh, uh, explicit initial data. So if we take uh, an initial data uh, v zero bar, it can be anything uh, in the nice and smooth in the analytic space. And if we take the uh, baroclinic mode um, localized, very, very localized at some frequency k with k3 uh, not equal to zero, to be uh, z dependent, uh, then uh, we can adjust this coefficient ck here uh, in terms of the frequency, okay? And this example, um, this is an example of a function uh, that is the Sobolev norm uh, of the baroclinic, it decays like one over omega. However, uh, the analytic norm is of order one, as you can see. And uh, for, for this specific initial condition uh, or sequence of initial condition, so here we can construct the sequence of initial condition for which um, um, as I said, the uh, analytic norm is of order one, Sobolev norm it decays, and the, the time of existence um, uh, grows as the rotation becomes faster and faster. And I think I'm done. Thank you.